Good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending my short presentation on abdominal decompression as a major contributor to amniotic drainage induced circulatory dysfunction following intrauterine interventions for twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Twin to twin transfusion syndrome complicates around 10% of all monochronic diamniotic twin pregnancies. Induced by unbalanced intertwin blood flow through vascular anastomosis on the placental surface, the condition leads to volume depletion in the donor twin and simultaneous volume overload in the recipient twin. Left untreated, the process is mostly progredient and in these cases fetal outcome is usually unfavorable. Fetoscopic laser ablation of placental anastomosis is currently the best treatment available for TTTS, yielding double survival rates of more than 60% in large recent series. FLA is usually completed by amniotic drainage of the recipient's excess fluid between 1,000 to 4,000 milliliters to achieve normal amniotic fluid levels. In contrast to the high number of scientific reports on fetal outcome and treatment options, data on maternal hemodynamic changes or adverse side effects following FLA procedures are scarce. Clinical signs suggestive of maternal hemodilution were described in cases of mid-trimester TTTS managed by FLA and subsequent amniotic drainage, providing first evidence that such interventions pose significant impact on the maternal compartment. A variety of observations, including maternal hemodynamic adaptations, decrease of intrauterine pressure and increase of placental volume have been described following high volume amnid drainage. The observed hemodynamic characteristics may be severe and are then similar to the so-called Ballantine syndrome or Miro syndrome. However, the mechanisms leading to these complications are still not comprehensively understood. In a recently published work, we could demonstrate that maternal hemodilution is not only the exception but a frequent observation of a high volume amniotic drainage. As you can see on the figure, maternal hematocrit, hemoglobin and serum albumin drop significantly from preoperative measurements to postoperative measurements suggestive for maternal hemodilution. Furthermore, we were able to demonstrate a significant relationship between the amount of amniotic fluid drained and maternal hemodilutional effects. It became apparent that the ultrasound guided amniotic drainage was responsible for those effects and not FLA. Therefore, we hypothesized that abdominal decompression due to high volume amniotic drainage might be, at least partly, responsible for maternal hemodilution effects and circulatory disturbances after FLA. We performed a single center pilot study between March 2017 and May 2019. We included monochorionic deamniotic twin pregnancies complicated by twin to twin transfusion syndrome between 16 and 26 weeks of gestation. Intra abdominal pressure monitoring was performed according to international standards via a Foley catheter placed inside the urinary bladder. After emptying of the bladder, 50 milliliters of sterile saline solution was inserted and the catheter was linked to a digital pressure transducer. We measured intraabdominal pressure every 200 milliliters and started before amniotic drainage and performed the last measurements after the drainage was finished. We recorded under stop flow and no touch technique and measurements during contractions were discarded. Maternal serum albumin and hematocrit were recorded before and 24 hours after intervention. So, in this study, we showed that maternal hematocrit dropped from 33.3 before to 28.1% postoperative and serum albumin decreased from 37.9 to 30.1 gram per liter 
cost operative measurements. Based on the calculations by Schneeditz and colleagues, we could demonstrate a relative expansion of blood volume by 18% and a relative expansion of plasma volume by 24%, as expected for hemodilution in absence of true hemorrhage. Corresponding to those changes, the intra-abdominal pressure significantly decreased from 17.7 to 9.7 mm mercury. Furthermore, we could objectify a dose-dependent effect of amniotic drainage volume on the intra-abdominal pressure in a linear regression model. So, in conclusion, we may state that ultrasound-guided fetoscopic interventions with subsequent amniotic drainage show significant maternal side effects and high volume amniotic drainage is associated with a significant decrease of intra-abdominal pressure and maternal hemodilution. Thus, we would like to introduce the term of amniotic drainage induced circulatory dysfunction, AICD, to describe pathophysiological circumstances after and during high volume annual drainage. Thank you so much for your attention and have a good day.